Hello, I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. Good job. <laughs> and we are moving, so I figured this is a good chance for us to teach you how to successfully move house with a rabbit. If you're new to my channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscription button and the notification bell next to it so that you never miss any of our weekly videos. When moving with the rabbit, the most important thing is to make sure you have a plan ahead of time. You don't want to do this just off the cuff because if you do, uh, it may end up causing your rabbit a lot of stress during the moving process. And it's it's already going to be a little bit stressful for them, but having a plan so you know what you're going to be doing with your rabbit and when can really help to reduce the amount of stress that they feel during this process. Now, ideally, this plan would end up being that you can either move your stuff first and then move your rabbit in after, or move your rabbit in first and then move the rest of your stuff after. However, that's not always possible. Sometimes you can only move everything at one day at a time. For example, for us right now, we're actually moving to a different state and there's just no way for us to move some stuff first and then move her after. So instead I have to move, do it all in one day, which means that there's a little bit of extra planning to go into it to make sure that I can help Ellie stay as calm and stress-free as possible. So it's really not an ideal situation, but I can walk you through what I'm going to be doing so that you can have as much success as possible in this move. During the move out process, so when you're moving all of your stuff out of your old place, you want to try and keep your rabbit as far away from the action as possible. If you can, just keep them in their original enclosure and just save the enclosure part till last. That's best, but sometimes that's not possible. The enclosure is kind of in the middle of everything, in which case you would want to move them aside to a place that is not going to have as much foot traffic going back and forth so that you're not stressing your rabbit out as much. For Ellie, I can't really keep her in the same place because she's in the middle of my room. I have to move the bed, which needs to be one of the first things to go into the truck. So I instead moved her enclosure out into this corner in the living room that is far away from where the action is. She's not going to have as much foot traffic going back and forth and will hopefully cause her to be less stressed during this process. You do want to make sure your rabbit has a place where they can still have uh, some freedom and exercise, at least in a large enclosure, uh, until you're actually ready to get into the vehicle and move. So don't put your rabbit into their carrier until you have everything packed into the truck and you are ready to go. Because that way your rabbit can at least have some space to hop around and exercise during the hours that it takes you to get everything packed up. Once you do get everything packed up, then you want to get your rabbit into the carrier and bring them to your new place. If possible, you want to make sure your rabbit can go into the carrier on their own, so without you having to place them in the carrier. This will reduce the stress a little bit at the start of the journey. Since car rides can be stressful for a rabbit as is, you want to at least make it their choice to go into this carrier. You want it to be big enough for your rabbit, so you want to make sure that they can turn around inside the carrier, but you don't want it to be so big that if you make a sudden stop, your rabbit would end up being thrown against the side of the carrier, because <laughs> that can be potentially dangerous for a rabbit in a car ride. <laughs> uh, so that is definitely something you want to take into account. You also will want to, if you have a, uh, a carrier with hard sides and a slick bottom, make sure that you have a towel or something down for traction for their feet. That way they're not going to slip around during the car ride because that can be bad for their back and it can also be kind of stressful. As you're moving into your new place, you want to do the same thing except in reverse. Make sure you get your rabbit out of the car first. Give them a little setup that is away from all of the traffic that's going to be going in and out and set them up, open the carrier so that your rabbit can come out on their own terms. Don't force them to come out, but allow them to come out. Make sure that they have hay and pellets and everything that they need available so they can start getting used to this new place while you are moving everything else in. Ideally, you'll be able to move your rabbit in where their enclosure will be. However, in some cases, if that's going to be in the way of the foot traffic, 
that might not be possible. Or in my case, since she lives under my bed and she's going to continue to live under my bed, I can't really set her up until I get the bed set up. So in those cases, just make sure your rabbit is kind of away from the foot traffic so they can have as little stress as possible. Make sure you check in on them every once in a while to make sure that they are kind of starting to get acclimated and make sure that they're maybe starting to eat. After you've moved everything in, then you want to make sure your rabbit is set up in where their permanent enclosure is going to be. It is a good idea to try to set up their enclosure as similarly as possible to how it was set up from the place that you moved from. This will help them adjust a little bit easier. So make sure you place the hiding houses and litter box and their bowls in the enclosure in the same pattern that they were placed before you moved. This way they already know where everything is and everything is familiar and it can ground them a little bit even though they're in a new environment now they at least have some stuff that is familiar to them and it can help them from being overwhelmed in this new place. Once you have moved in you will also probably want to give your rabbit some time to adjust. Uh, some rabbits are quite confident and they'll be happy to go and explore on their own no problem but some rabbits really will need a couple days to get used to this new place. They might be pretty scared at first, maybe start thumping at any new sounds or scents. And that's okay, give them time to adjust, comfort your rabbit as much as possible, pet them, and try to stay with your rabbit as much as possible these first couple days, because if they know you and they've bonded with you, then having your presence, having being around your rabbit will be a comfort to them, and it will help them to adjust a little bit easier. The actual process of traveling with your rabbit is also something that you're going to want to consider. If at all possible, you want to make this a road trip and not something on the train or a plane. In trains and planes, you have a lot less control over what's happening and it can end up being pretty stressful for rabbits. There's a lot more people around, there's loud sounds, you can't control the temperature. There's a lot more that can potentially scare your rabbit or go wrong simply because you don't have as much control. So, if at all possible, you do actually want to travel with your rabbit in a car. If you do have to take the train or the plane, do not check your rabbit as cargo. That is a very, very bad idea and it is sure to scare your rabbit. So you want to make sure to use a train or a plane company that allows you to bring rabbits and pets in with you in the seats. You may have to purchase an extra seat for it or uh, pay an extra fee but you never ever want to check a rabbit as cargo. That can be a terrifying and very, very stressful experience for rabbits. In a car, depending on how far you have to go, you'll probably want to take a number of breaks. If you're just moving within a city or to a neighboring town, if you're in the car for maybe an hour or less, then it's not a big deal. You can just drive straight through, drive to the new place. But if you're going a longer distance, then you really do want to take breaks Give your rabbit some time to relax a little bit, hopefully de-stressify because the vibration and the movement of cars can be very stressful for rabbits. And if we're going longer distances, you want to try to try to see if you can get them to eat during these breaks. So it's a good idea to bring some fresh leafy greens, some of your rabbit's favorites with you. Bring them in a cooler and try to offer them to your rabbit while you take a break in a rest stop or something like that. Because as much as possible, we want to keep our, di our rabbit's digestion going because that can, uh, that'll help us avoid any potential health risks or GI stasis uh, after the move because stress can also cause your rabbit's digestion to slow down. So it is very important to try to do what you can to keep your rabbit eating. They're probably not going to be eating during the car ride, which is why you want to take those breaks and give your rabbit a chance to kind of calm down a little bit and munch on something. During the car ride, you're also going to want to try to comfort your rabbit if possible. You don't want to give them so much attention that you're stressing them out, but if your carrier has a way of opening up the, at the top, or if they have like a little hole you can stick your hand in, then you can go ahead and pet your rabbit, talk to them gently, help to just try to comfort them, help them feel a little bit better, and make sure that they know that you're there and you're with them and it's going to be okay. You also definitely if you're traveling in the summer or any kind of hot months, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to have an air conditioner because rabbits can get heat stroke and you don't want to risk that. Uh, the wind coming in from windows is generally not going to be enough. So you want to keep the temperature in the car lower. This will help keep your rabbit comfortable and slightly less stressed. 
for your rabbit's carrier, in addition to making sure that it is not too large or too small, you also want to add some hay in there so that if they feel like it, they can munch on it. And you'll also want to attach a water bottle to the side, at least if you're going a long distance. If you're only going to be in the car for maybe an hour or less, then it's okay to use a smaller, maybe canvas bag that you can't really attach a water bottle to, then that's okay. But if you're going any longer distance, then it's actually pretty important to get a hard-sided carrier so that you can attach one of those water bottles. And it will help your rabbit feel a little bit more secure and comfortable in during the car ride. And of course, you want to buckle your rabbit into the, the car. Sometimes carriers will come with an ability to have, like buckle them in, but sometimes you have to like use the handle of the carrier to help buckle your rabbit in safely so that you don't have to worry about if you make a sudden stop or get into an accident, you don't have to worry about the carrier going flying out of the car and your rabbit getting hurt. You also never want to open the carrier inside the car uh, and let your rabbit out because that can end up causing accidents uh, if your rabbit gets under the seats or distracts people driving that can end up being pretty bad and causing causing an accident so make sure you keep your rabbit secure in their carrier while you're traveling what else do you want to make sure you have with you while you're traveling with your rabbit to make sure that you're looking out for their health and safety first you'll want to bring with you some critical care and a large syringe Critical care is something that is used to essentially force feed a rabbit who is not eating. Generally, you would only need to do this after some kind of surgery. But sometimes if your rabbit gets really stressed, they'll end up developing anorexia and start refusing to eat. Something like moving can potentially cause this excessive stress in rabbits and they'll start refusing to eat, which can very quickly lead to some pretty bad health problems in rabbits. It's very dangerous. So while I wouldn't say this is a common occurrence, in moving rabbits, it is a possibility. So it is a good idea to bring some critical care with you. What you do is you mix up this powder with some water and then you can feed that to your rabbit. If they'll eat it right out of your, like a spoon or your hand, that's best. But you can also syringe feed them. This is only if your rabbit is completely refusing to eat. As much as possible, you wanna allow your rabbit to eat on their own. But this is, this is just for emergency situations where you would mix up the powder and then you would feed your rabbit to get them to eat and help stimulate their digestion again. It's really something just to bring with you in case of emergency. You probably will not have to use it, but just in case you'll want it. You also want to make sure you pack some of your rabbit's pellets with you in the car as well as some of their hay, which should be in with your rabbit's carrier. You of course also want to make sure that your rabbit has the water bottle, but also make sure you bring extra water just in case because you never know if there'll be a spill or what will happen. So it's a good idea to always have extra water so that your rabbit will never run out and become dehydrated. They likely won't be drinking much while on the road simply because car rides are stressful, but it is still a possibility and you wanna make sure your rabbit has enough water available. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna wanna pack some of those yummy leafy greens that are more enticing to your rabbit so that they'll be more likely to eat during breaks and once you get to your new home you can set those out for your rabbit so that they'll be more likely to start eating faster you'll also want to pack an extra towel or two to make sure that if you have to handle your rabbit and burrito them at any point during this process that you can because you never know what will happen and you, it just might become necessary they can also help in cleaning anything if there are any accidents that happen so bringing a towel and extra cleaning supplies to clean up any like pee stains if your rabbit happens to drip some out while they're in the car that is a good idea to bring with you you'll also want to make sure you have anything that you can use as a temporary enclosure uh, it can just be their normal enclosure for example i use the the x pen as ellie's normal enclosure and i would also use that for her temporary enclosure during the times when i have to keep her separate from all of the moving chaos you want to make sure you bring that with you with whatever vehicle your rabbit is in that way you'll be ready to set up their temporary enclosure it's also a good idea to do the same thing with their litter box and litter make sure you have it with you in the vehicle that your rabbit is in so that you can set up their litter box as soon as you get to whatever your new home is going to be and after all this you are now in a new home with your rabbit it will still be a little bit stressful, but our goal is to reduce the stress as much as possible. So good luck with your move.
If you found this video helpful, then please feel free to hit the subscription button and the thumbs up because that actually really does help out. And thank you so much for watching and I hope we will see you next week.